Hello everybody, my name is Chris, and welcome back to more Horizon Zero Dawn, The Frozen Wilds. We're back, we're continuing the expansion, it's going great. So recently, we made it to the top of the mountain, and tracked down Orea, which was a, a very, it was a distance, it was a very far distance, she was on the very, very top of the mountain, in one of the, in a facility of the old ones that was built and designed for something called Project Firebreak. And we, we we haven't heard it referenced in this game yet, so in the base game, it was never heard of. Like, all through like Project Zero Dawn, as far as I know, Firebreak was never mentioned. So this is like a secret project? Or it was a project that was done alongside Zero Dawn? Or after, or before, I don't know. I'm sure we'll learn more. But so we talked to Aurea, and we found out the spirit that she's like referring to seems it seems to me like it's an AI, like Gaia or Hades. But the the daemon that is basically messing with all the machines here suppressed her too, the spirit. And so we're we're working to help free the spirit from the daemon and also take down the daemon probably. But in order to in order to basically start that path, we have to um according to Aurea, we we should be chieftain. And even though we don't want that, she is pushing for it and that's what we're that's what we're gonna do uh i guess right like we're gonna become we're gonna become chieftain of the we're gonna replace uh was it air attack and the whole purpose of that is because we're trying to uh, what is it basically just come up with a better plan you know now in order to do that we have to do what we've just started doing, which is proving ourselves to the Werak. And what the Werak are, are basically their tribes within the tribe. So, very, very niche groups. And so what we have to do for these ones, we have to go, we have to basically uh, clear a hunting ground. We have to go clear a bandit camp. And then there was one more. That's the bandit camp. All the way down here. We're gonna go talk to Sekuli. Because they might have some insight into something. So, we're over here by the hunting grounds. This is where Araya was. All the way over here. So we made quite the distance across the mountain. And then, we're gonna do the hunting ground. We're gonna pop up here. We're gonna check out this. Um, and then... We're probably going to make our way down, swing over to the bandit camp, before heading all the way back down. That's the plan. That's what I'm imagining. We got this cool new weapon. It's uh, this bad boy, the Banuke Storm Slinger. It's rad. It's basically just like a lightning gun, but it shoots like shock orbs. It's pretty great. I'll I save the shooting for down in the hunting ground. We haven't actually, we haven't actually gotten a chance to like really use it yet, but for enemies and machines, we against shock. This is a, this is good. This is great. Okay, real quick before we actually get into the hunting ground, um, I know. Uh, if I can, and so a couple people, a number of people have told me, uh, in the comments that these audio points here, the audio data points, also have text, which. I was like, okay, and this one, it didn't, the text here was just literally the audio point, and the, it does do a pop-up, but it just takes me to this, and I was like, okay, well, there's no, the text data points are here, we have like these ones, but no, if you actually, <laughs> if you actually go into it, there's the audio, the audio text, and then below it, there's all this stuff. So, 
that's actually it's it's a little bit more subtle so i may i may not pick up on all of them right away but i promise that we will be going through them all especially before the end so um this one, I'll just replay it, just so. This is Director of Security Blevins resending the emergency supply order. Try reading it this time, okay? You sh weasels don't want me calling my people in SLC. His people. Blevins is such a force to be reckoned with. Alright, so the mess tech for this one. Let me begin by spelling out disaster for you. A destructive event causing a level of disturbance unmanageable via the application of ordinary resources. What you have given us is distinctly ordinary. Dummies version. Give me what I need or you'll be on an auto car to lay off city quicker than you can say code red. Damn. So the list one more time. 3,000 MREs. No lasagna. Okay, that's a little rude. Lasagna's, lasagna's great. 30. Military-grade flashlights. No more junk store crap. 10. Portable water pumps. Not 5, not 8, 10. 50. Tubes of fungicide. We're working underground. Spores happen. 15. Hydraulic jacks. 12. Replacement drone propulsion units. 50. Holographic micro drives. In a disaster, see definition above. It's absolutely critical to track all ingresses and egresses of the facility. I take our safety seriously, even if you don't. 50 almond scented extra soft data. Oh my god. <laughs> what was that? Almond scented and extra soft? What, what could that even. What could that even be? I don't know. See, this one... Someone hacked the menu board to display obscene messages about our colleague, Mr. Blevins. Is this the most advanced geological project ever undertaken or a junior high locker room? Come on, people. <laughs> Come on, people. And then I thought it ended there, obviously. It, um, but yeah, we got more. Two, YNPF all from Kenny Chow. BCC Blevins, of course. Date, December 3rd, 2046. Hacking of menu board. Attention all staff. At an assembly of our country's finest scientific minds recruited to address a grave threat to national safety. It would be fair to expect more mature conduct than that, than that demonstrated yesterday in the canteen. Mr. Blevins plays a crucial role in the successful execution of Firebreak and is due the respect of both his title and of his many contributions to the project. Any further interference in the menu boards will necessitate my direct personal involvement, Dr. Kenny Chow, Project Director. From Kenny Chow to Anita Sandoval, December 3rd, 2046, forwarded hacking of the menu board. Anita, was it you? Wink. <laughs> he, he probably knew it was her immediately. And that just, just the fact that he emailed me here separately. He is, dude is, dude is crushing hard. Director of security Blevins is writing us like a petty tyrant. I can't even sneeze without triggering his control issues. Then this one, personal log. If Blevins reconfigures the pattern on the Lambent Orbicular door access one more time, I'm gonna vomit all over it. <laughs> Sure, I don't want some gift shop employee rooting around in the firebreak facility, but these measures aren't about security, they're about control. I wonder if Blevins gets in early to watch everybody try to solve the new pattern, perched over his little camera array in his big boy office. <laughs> what a bridge troll. You'd think that a fraction of his fancy drone budget could go toward buying him some classier body spray. God help me and Kenny if he ever finds out about us. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Ah, uh, 
What? Hmm. If he ever finds out about them, like about her and Kenny, or about like just them giving him shit all the time, then okay, yeah, that was that didn't have text. This one has text. Kenny and I don't need to fight about the laundry, so instead we fight about incommensurability and restrictions on machine intelligence. Personal log. I had an ag and I had an argument with Kenny this morning. When a couple's first fight hinges on the Turing Act, you know you're dealing with some real sexy nerds. I won the argument, I guess. But I'm less concerned whether or not I can pull this off than with the ethical implications of succeeding. I promise Kenny that the suite of coping mechanisms I've designed will help manage any emotional fallout from the software. But privately, I'm less confident. I'm a programmer, not a shrink. The minute minu the minutia uh, the minutia of roboethics do start to see less seem less relevant when a refusal to supply Firebreak with the necessary conditions for its success comes at the cost of millions of lives. It's worth putting one consciousness at risk to save so many others, isn't it? Ugh. Trying to solve this with numbers makes you feel like a sociopath. Then... Okay, see? Yeah, up there it says voice recording with text. But... Damn, so much. How am I going to explain to Kenny that Firebreak is doomed without a guiding intelligence advanced enough not only to think, but to feel. Interesting. So, is she designing it? Because the whole to feel, is that... It seems like something... Mm. Like, Anita was involved in Zero Dawn? Was she? I feel like she was. I can't specifically remember exactly, but I feel like she was involved. And if she wasn't involved, she should have been. Because if she did... It, the only reason I'm even thinking that is because it's she just made that discussion about, uh, you know... A guide in an AI that can not only think but feel, and that's what they needed Gaia to do. You know, it's interesting. Oh, point six. What does it mean to quantify an intelligence anyway? You can't just assign a number on a continuum to a conscious mind and then expect it to obey whatever arbitrary limit that number represents. There's no way around it. Without the supervision of a mind beyond human capacities, Firebreak is going to fail. And 0 0.6 won't cut it either. So like the the, the limit to uh, sentience, like 0 0.6, 0 0.6. By pushing sentience, you inevitably generate a system that can experience emotion wild, sloppy, unmanageable emotion. You're capable of abstract thought. You're capable of fear, like vast silver. I won't go through that again. I categorically refuse. Hopefully I can get this all across to Kenny. I like him. I like his lopsided little smile. <laughs> I especially like those circles he makes with his hands when he gets excited about an idea. If we hadn't been flung together like this, maybe he and I... Well, no point in wool gathering... I wonder, could an artificial brain experience this singular combination of desire and preemptive regret? Damn. Well, I guess Anita was also crushing on him, too. But. Hell yeah. Ugh. Shit. Okay. Well, I will... <laughs> I will be more conscious in our efforts to read the text logs with these, too. So... Oh yeah, cool. Gives us more insight. It's really, it's actually really neat. So, now, back. So, <laughs> let's let's see what this hunting ground has to offer, because it's going to be different. Aurea said that I should compete in the trials here. Aurea did. 
She's never sensed someone before. Then what is your reason for training? I would ask this of any Banuk who attempted the trials. I'm going to challenge Aratok to become chieftain of his Warak. <laughs> well, you better get started then. <laughs> yeah, does she know about the Hunter's Lodge? Is that a thing? Because this is a totally different place. I'm guessing you're not part of the Hunter's Lodge. Every tribe claims they were the first to have hunting grounds. And every tribe claims the Karja stole it from them. So who was the first? <laughs> we were. And the Karja stole it from you. That's right. <laughs> Jace, literally. That's funny. It's the same exact thing she just said. You look like you've got some stories to tell. <laughs> oh, I outlived most of my stories. I ran with the Thunder's daughters long ago before they ran their course. For a time, we shook the snow off the men of Benor. I couldn't last. Some fell in glorious battle. Some were exiled in infamy. Still glorious, if you ask me. Others had a worse fate. What's worse? To grow old. And find that all the rules and traditions you fought so hard against are still there. Damn. That's why I tell all the hunters I train to stay young. I feel that. How do the trials work around here? There's no Karja medals. I had some, but I used them to patch up holes in my snow boots. <laughs> Instead, you'll compete against the best times set by other Banuk hunters. Ooh. To take second place, even third place, puts you among names of legend. What if I come in first? We'll see. Eh. Legend. If you need to know about the trials, I'll explain them to you. Control Onslaught Chieftain's Trial. Oh, this is going to be good. The control trial tests a hunter's ability to rein in the storm slinger's power. Only the wisest understand these shamanic weapons, and only the bravest wield them. All right. Sounds like something that uh, we're going to do. It begins after you descend that rope to the arena. <laughs> we'll need a moment to pull the machines from the pass into the arenas. Then make your descent. Oh, they have a whole thing. Kill machines with the Storm Slinger. So this is actually capable of killing them, not just, like, stunning them. Alright. Oh my god. Okay. This is... Holy shit. Okay. Okay. There's, I feel like there's a trick to this guy. Like, obviously, this isn't doing all the damage. So I'm wondering. Canister's on his back, maybe. Right in the face. Okay. Okay, okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. Let me... Because we're going to try this again. We're, we, we only go for number one. The Onslaught trial challenges a hunter to withstand the ebb and flow of combat. Machines will be released into the arenas in waves. Pace yourself. Strategize. Only then will you be able to defeat them all without being overwhelmed. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to try the next trial. That first one, there's just like so much. Maybe I'm just not using the right weapons. And I should save the... Save the, the Storm Slinger for like the final blows. But I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back and try to get the gold on that one. Maybe when we get a better, like an upgraded version, or maybe I just learn how to use it better. We'll start when you hit the snow at the bottom of that rope. We'll need a moment to pull the machines from the pass into the arenas, then make your descent. All right. 
Ugh. Okay. Kill the waves of machines. Well, that sounds pretty straightforward, honestly. So... All right. I'll save the shooting for down. In the Let's go. Ground. Let's give it a shot. My God, damn! I don't know what is it about distance, motherfucker. so close. Wait, there was more? What the fuck? Okay, so basically I've concluded that either this trial or we're not really the best equipped for yet, or I I am just doing it wrong <laughs> to to get the the highest Jesus. scores. So before I even breathe out, we're gonna come back because I don't wanna I don't wanna keep spending time because it's been like already like twenty minutes trying to trying to do them. So we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing on. We're gonna head over to here we're gonna get uh we're gonna see what's going on there because i think and that we have yeah so we we just proved ourselves to the warwick now we have to go to song's edge just down there so now i see our options were one of the three we could have done. Which is interesting. I'm kind of surprised we didn't... It didn't let us do all three. We just picked one. But I guess we can always go over here at some point. But, yeah. So we're going to go up here first. Because we're going to go... We're going to go learn... Or take a shaft out of one of the... The machines up there. The birds, they call it. That they make their their spears out of. And that guy's gonna teach us maybe how to make our own? I don't know. We'll see. But okay, it's not too far. Okay, what is this? It must be Ooh. the cave that shaman told me about. Well. Long way down. And not natural either. Not natural. Hmm. Okay. Anything? Another goat? An owl? There's owls? That's cool. I see the, the sensors down there for stalkers. Which worries me. I want to do this, but I feel like that's going to land right on top of them. Maybe if we just do a smart approach from the side. Yeah, 
Yikes. Okay. Is that a jet? Holy shit. You might not be alone down here. Okay. You guys are gonna walk over them and trigger them Those anyway, the but birds. that's what they mean by metal birds. I was imagining it was like a glint hawk or something. It is literally Yeah, metal bird. A jet. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> and it's actually really intact too, like we usually just see ruins. That's so cool. Something's been hacked out of it. Maybe I can find another of these flying machines. Interesting. Oh, damn, nice. There's got to be a, at least one more, right? There's no way they'd have just, like, one jet in this hangar. Maybe my focus will see something. Ooh. Okay, I thought I could get in there. Controls the drone transport platform. If I could move okay. that flying machine over a little. Let's try that. Okay, how can I... Yeah, there we go. Shimmy over. Whoa. Sick. Hell yeah. I don't know what this is. What is this going to do, though? Perhaps my focus can help me. Oh. Huh. Not so grounded after all. Now I can get across. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait. There's one on the other side. What is this? Oh, is that another one of those figures? Yeah. A little figure of some strange animal. Strange animal. It's a deer. Or a buck, technically. All right. Hell yeah. Let's get another one of those. Just have to go up. There's the door lock. Ooh. I'll need to configure it. Right. Ain't nothing we haven't done before. Got one of these, though. If those punk technicians think I'm gonna sleep on them waltzing in here and screwing around with the drone routines, <laughs> they have seriously underestimated my sense of mission. Let's just reset that hollow lock. Echo, Sierra, echo. Oh my god. Need a lead. Focus my. So, did he change the way this lock works? Shit. No, okay. Or he did, but, you know. <laughs> Blevins. What a, what a guy. He's out here. His strong sense of mission. You know, he's... He's here... He's here for the cause. Hmm. Anything my focus could reveal. Yeah, looking around. Oh. oh that's just the door. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Scoop down here. Is this the munitions? Yeah. Oh. Yo, what's in here? A lot of stuff. Oh my god. Okay, what is what are you? I understand, Mr. Blevins. I didn't ask for a bunch of flying cameras. I need security, not surveillance. And security means firepower. As God is my witness, I will not be caught squirting blanks <laughs> if and when a major act of terrorism desecrates these facilities. Oof. There we go. <laughs> Mr. Blevins. Could be something around that my focus will see. So the idea there is, so he wanted 
he wanted like fighter jets, not just like flying drones, just with cameras. No one's you know. touched this machine since it got sealed in here. Yeah, look at that. It's brand new. It's brand new. Ban him! Oh my god. What <laughs> Kenny Chow. Here's Bonner. Ban him. Kenny, I get it, okay? I really do. Far Pharaoh is Firebreak's patron. Oh, interesting. Blevins is Pharaoh's lapdog, circle of ass kissing, blah, blah, blah. But if you allow Blevins to remain on site, installation is going to take twice as long as we're budgeted for. And I don't know how deep Firebreak's pockets are, but I can guarantee you they're not bottomless. We've just got done recalibrating, recalibrating the entire fleet. The entire fleet, Kenny. Why, I imagine you're wondering. Oh, Kenny, I'm so glad you hypothetically asked. Blevins was unhappy with the baseline behavioral routines of the security drones. You know, the ones he selected himself. Not aggressive enough, he said. I doubt a Rottweiler mounted on the ICBM would be aggressive enough for him. So we patched in some combat behaviors, which, let me tell you, was not easy. Basically outfitted these things for war. Think about that, Kenny. Bleeding edge combat drones patrolling in empty wilderness. Also, Blevins can play army on Firebreak's dime. I'm begging you, Kenny. Find a way to bar him from the hangar. Please. Harris. Damn. So. Basically, the whole thing was... It was going to be just security drones, but this dude decided... You know what? I don't want security drones anymore. I want these things to be ready for, for war. And Pharaoh is funding it. The fact that Pharaoh is funding this, this could turn it's like, up. what the hell? Shouldn't be hard to remove. Oh, sure just that little thing. When I'm back in Song's Edge. Okay, we just needed that little piece. That was convenient. Nice. Ah, oh, shit. I knew it. I knew one of those was going to show up. I'm surprised it wasn't here already. Alright. Now with a couple of these. A couple of those. Oh my god. Hit him, please. <laughs> Oof. Sorry, my guy. Yep. I was curious how, how strong this is going to be against them. It's, it's alright. are still legendary weapon of this game. Hell yeah. Alright, let's get these parts and get back to Song's Edge. Okay, and then since we're here, we're gonna check out this, uh, this one we had to... This feels like sunburn. Oof. Um, where this place was not full of water, and now it is. And it all came from upstream. So, we're gonna go check it out. We gotta follow the river. Follow the river all the way up. I don't know how far, or all the way. <laughs> but something caused the water to uh, flood in out of nowhere. And since they stated like there was no rain, and you know, even the snow melting wouldn't have been enough to cause that much. It's gotta be something. Something messing around up there. There. That must be where the water's coming from. Looks like Interesting. Old ones built. Oh, shit. It's a dam. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Hell yeah. 
is actually pretty cool to see. That's nuts. Look at that. Wow. Uh, I guess I could use some arrow bone or some owl bones. I feel bad. <laughs> it's. Oh. Uh, hello? Okay. Now we're trying to. Let's go in there. So, okay, so if it is a dam, then something caused the dam to break. Something caused the dam to break and flood out here. Caused this whole thing. And. Well, somebody wanted in. Nearly blew this entire ledge off just to get through the door. Shit. <laughs> Okay. So, whoever did this is probably the reason. Right? Flooding detected. Evacuation recommended. Overflow basin compromised. The overflow basin. Oh shit. Is that the dip? Interesting. So something yeah, something did happen. Shit. Looks like a control center. What happened in here to start the water flowing? Yeah, what is, uh... Oh, hello. I don't hello. see anything, but this room looks like it's packed with old stuff. Might be something useful. The lock positions, another holographic interface. There must be some kind of code. A piece is missing. <laughs> it's always one. Not getting in here without it. Damn, look at that. Intake tower malfunction. Drainage system offline. That's probably not good news. Looks like most of the facility is underwater. How did this happen? Yeah, what? Hmm. Well, there's a dude over there. Could use my focus, see what it turns up. Yeah. And there's our troublemaker. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be as good at getting out as he is at getting in. He's stuck. Gildan. Bruh. Okay, so we can't get in there yet, so we go this way? Yeah. Must have forced his way through here. I've become trapped somehow. I've become trapped. I've become trapped. I'll buy the floor jump to hear another person stomping about in here. It's yeah. Like the door is stuck. Maybe uh This is the perfect opportunity to do a good deed and clear your conscience for whatever cruelties you may have committed. <laughs> what? Uh, you're not one of those snap moths I saw outside, are you? Oh my god. <laughs> this guy. You're a snap ma, I don't suppose you'd tell me. <laughs> Would you? <ya? laughs> uh, that's funny. You can say uh, anything. Snap ma probably couldn't fit through the door. Or climb to the door. Or understand the function of doors. Alright, you're either here to <laughs> rescue me or you're an uncharacteristically small and clever snap ma. God damn it, I was really hoping he was gonna talk more. That's funny. Or I've Imagine you entirely. <laughs> On the off chance you're not the result of my soul going soft, um, little help? <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I don't wish to rush you, potentially imaginary rescuer. Take your time, of course, and happy to accommodate. I love that they put so many voice lines in for this dude. Would that I could tell you this is my first time getting stuck mid Dell. <laughs> no such luck, I'm afraid. God damn. <laughs> okay. Usually I have to get myself out of these predicaments, so you can imagine my relief. <laughs> we have one more, just in case. I once spent two days 
wandering a ruin before I found an exit. Two full days! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, that's great. That was, okay. Is preferable, of course. Not much wandering room in here. All right, let's get him out. All right. <laughs> oh. Are you all right? <laughs> well, you don't know how happy you just made me. <laughs> For a moment, I thought my fire was snuffed. My forge gone cold. But nope. Nope. Not old Gildan. <laughs> old Gildan. You're welcome. Uh, wait. Start from the beginning. What are you doing down here? Ow! My apologies. When you mostly talk to yourself, you can tell your stories in whatever order you like. There's an artifact in that storage room I simply must acquire but as you may have noticed the door won't budge i took one of those roundish ringy what's it's from the wall beside the door no luck so i <laughs> had to go with that panel with the button even less luck my gentle experimentation caused the chamber to flood a little so oh i pushed the button God. again perhaps a little too enthusiastically sparks and smoke <laughs> now obviously i came here to investigate my cautious footsteps may have contributed slightly to the collapse of a bridge. And when the bridge began to collapse, I may have, for the sake of expedience, abandoned the cumbersome ringy what's it to the waves. And by the time I thought to give up the endeavor, the door had closed behind me. <laughs> and thusly do we come to the present moment. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my god. This guy, Gildan. What a card. He's the reason that it flooded. He's the reason that he pulled one of those security interfaces out. God damn it, this dude. You said something about an artifact? Indeed. That storage room is brimming with treasures from the old ones. But one in particular caught my eye. An intricate looking glass. I've only seen one such device before. My old mom brought one back for me from... Wherever she'd gone to that time, I remember holding it, staring into its face, seeing myself and my mother just over my shoulder, smiling. And one of these oh. looking glasses, it's in the storage room. Oh, yes, I'm quite sure. I peered into that dim little chamber and there it was. I've wanted to find one for so long, I... Yes, this time I'm sure I have. So, like a mirror? Well, there's no way we're getting into that storage room without another ring. It's part of the locking mechanism that controls the door. You don't say. Well, that's fantastic news. Marvelous, even. You've got two hands. I've got two hands. Perfect. <laughs> my savior, my salvation. And if you like, why what? wouldn't you? Of course you will. My accomplice. <laughs> Accomplice. Together, that ring is as good as ours, and with it, the storage room and its spoils. Didn't you say you dropped the ring in the water? Well, I'll grant you that adds a heretofore undiscussed level of complexity to the proceedings. Ah, <laughs> uh, God, damn, his uh, his way his way of talking is just so so much. So you found the button that controls the flow of water. <laughs> Quite by accident. And then you broke that button. Also, quite by accident. The panel's the only way to shut this place down, as far as oh I can God. tell. This isn't going to be easy. That storage room is filled, top to bottom. Would you be surprised to find the parts you need in there? I certainly wouldn't be. Uh-huh. So, we need to replace that ring and get into the storage room. Then I can fix the panel and shut this place down. And I can finally wrap my fingers around that looking glass. Okay, Gildan. How are we going to get that ring? Two sets of hands, girl. Two sets of hands. Behind us lie a pair of enormous gates. But I believe the gates must be operated in tandem. Together, we can dry this place out. Guess we better get started then. I guess we better. <laughs> okay, so... What are you saying? There's two, uh... There's oh yeah, there's two, like, little wheels.
Oh, yeah, gotta follow him. <laughs> this is chaotic. Ahead, if you girl. fell in See there, the that is scary. Time to put our hands to use. I'll take care of this one. There's another valve on the other side to lock the gate in place. Would you mind heading across and uh, doing the honors? Yep. Sure. There's one. There's one guy. Just, just everything fell apart because he, he was just too damn curious, too you know, determined. I'm reminded of a delve I undertook out near the claim. Stone ruins, cloud calls, lake wire. There's been 13 levels on that monstrosity, but no walls. Stone columns bearing the weight of the level above. Filled out with row upon row of those enormous, busted out old world parts. You know the ones uh, with the four wheels? A tub of stagnant water. Charming. <laughs> they just cart around families of birds? Yes, I'm sure that's exactly what those were for. <laughs> We'd all go out of our way to Marvelous! You made it! Cart around now birds. Grab that valve and give it a spin. On it. All right, let's uh. A little more now, and I this. should be able to get the blasted gate moving. There, you should be able to lower the gate. Huh? Right, you are. Now, when I get this gate down, you'll need to turn the valve again. Ought to lock this thing in place. Ah, I see. Okay. And a little bit of that. Okay. One gate down. Halfway through then, aren't we? Oh, so it's multi levels. It's levels to this. Good job. A ladder is a rare and special thing, girl. <laughs> Can depend on it to take you exactly where you need to go and no further. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I'd wager the valves for the second sluice gate are somewhere above us. Now how are we gonna get up there? Looks like I could jump across on that rickety resting platform. Great. That's... <laughs> uh. Oh god. Oh no. Oh, that is like paper thin. Yeah. Where am I? Oh God. Where where do we where do we try to go? I want to try to jump that, but that just seems like a bad idea. Oh God damn it! <laughs> I think it's the only. I think it's the only option we have. Just can't jump that high. All right. Oh god. We're going to try it and if we die, well, we know that we tried. Nice. Oh, thank god. <laughs> nice. Yay. What am I saying? That was stupendous. Never seen such absolute disregard for personal safety. Thanks. <laughs> I think. Uh. All right, that's great. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ooh. Damn family. Ready? One, two, three, four! Come on, sell out and run away, cowards! Oh, with sea cut it! Cut it! I forgot the word. Sim! Shells, we started off so strong and they're all just imploded. Well, that's sort of my MO. No, no. No heavy stuff. Switching gears. Band name! We need one. Oh my god. So, <laughs> they like just lived up here? <laughs> Basically, because they had to oh, constantly close, be. Oh, you're close, Just spring across the gap. Oh God. <laughs> ah, you're right above me. Just send that ladder on down. Yeah. So they just lived here, like the damn family, because they had to constantly be ready to operate it whenever. Look out below. Now we've done this once before. 
Could be as easy as falling down a hole. If you'd take the valve on the other side. If it's set up the same way on this side, I should look for an access tunnel. Makes it real easy. This, this is my sort of delve. A thousand little problems to solve. A million minute and invisible factors. My father used to say to me, Jubilee, he called me Jubilee. Jubilee, he said, Don't make the delve harder than it needs to be. The best delves are done in half the time it takes a campfire to sputter out. Now, my father was a great man. Oh my god, this guy talks so much. To find yourself stuck, then unstuck, to fail, then to succeed, to get lost, to find yourself. That's what makes a devil. Uh huh, Gildan. <laughs> I love it. What? Uh huh, yeah. That's right. Let's do something else. Oh, a lot of water in here. Okay. Okay, Gildan, turn the valve. Uh, it's not working. Um. Damn thing's too heavy. Glance behind me, would you? See anything big and uh, broken? Big and broken. Was oh, a counterweight? Okay. My release. There's the valve. This is this valve. So there's these. Hmm. Maybe if we just go. Yeah, maybe if we go up. Oh, God, I hate it. Hey, well, you're crazy. Oh. Damn. <laughs> this looks like part of the counterweight broke off. If I can get up there, my weight might be enough to get it moving again. Uh, hang on, okay? I've got a plan. I can't jump straight to the counterweight from here. But I could climb higher, get above it. Alright. Um, this is... This is gonna be... This is gonna be terrifying. Oh, God. No! Do it. The drop's too far, girl! <laughs> Very Going clever. Down. Okay, so I see. I see what we're doing. I get it. We were just heavy enough. Almost low enough to jump. You can make it! Let's see another one of those mad leaps! <laughs> mad leaps. <laughs> go, 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 go. Got it. We're good to go. You oh. were a sight there to we see. Go. Bounding from metal rust trap to metal rust trap. <laughs> yep. Still Boop. a bit of water, but low enough, wouldn't you say? Now then, uh, oh. where is that ring? Good question. Well, at least I should be able to swim now. Snap maw! It's a snap maw! Very, very big snap maw! <laughs> I see it, Gildan! Very big, very, very big! Just oh my stay God. out of the way! This guy... This guy is something else. <laughs> He's just... Uh, it seems like... It's such a... It's such a personality. For like, like all the all the Osaram we've met so far have had that like just so out there. What did that snap moss swallow that ring we're at? Just yeah, it right up. Well, then we're gonna get it out. We'll find out after I've killed it. <laughs> just it was like yeah after I do it. Oh, go, go, go. Man, oh, shit. 
Well, I can take that hit, though. Thanks to the wonderful army we have. Oh, God. Move. Okay, I gotta break the shell off. I see. Damn. Okay, 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 okay. There it is. Oh. Okay. Let's go. And then stab it right in the guts. Uh, the machine. Oh my god. Help. Right in the eye. Come on. Right in the eye. Right in the mouth. Tell me when it's dead, would you? It's dead. <laughs> Marvelous. So, the uh, ring. Maybe if you pry its jaws open and reach inside, I can't look. Oh my god. It's so dramatic. You're there it right. is. We got this him. This thing did swallow the ring. <laughs> That's the old gilded intuition in action. It's never led me astray. Sure, its chosen routes can be a bit circuitous, but never mind. <laughs> to the storage room. To the spoils. Oh, Ooh, what's in here? More old world treasures, perhaps? This place is full of surprises. Do we have a look? Didn't you want to get into the storage room? I do. Fervently. But, well, I got time to poke my nose in if you do. Nope, there he is. <laughs> got to. Alright, what is limited edition merch? Okay, shells. Shells, we're not focusing on that right now. Recording, okay? We're not even in the band meeting. Sort of counts in practice, right? Uh, merch. We need merch. Stickers! You're not a real band until someone vandalizes government property with your sticker. Congress, <laughs> I have been asked to remind you that conversations determined to be irrelevant to servitor training are discouraged. What were you saying about vandalizing government property? My god. <laughs> there's a whole, there's a story of the people here. We drained enough water for what we need to do, but Ooh. I wonder if I could empty out the whole dam. Oh, then that would flood down there, wouldn't it? Like that would that would oh that would just fill the the din with even more. Pipes, valves. Maybe I can drain the rest of the water from here. Sure are a lot of valves. I should check my focus first. What is my this? Focus might see something here. Valve's 101. Okay. Alright. Yo, Shelly. I'm trapped in servitor hell over here. Got in this morning, and as usual, that one half-baked chrome dolt was bumping up against the locked entry door in the reservoir room, moaning about requiring entry into the totality of the facility. Between its robotic voice and those weird grindy sounds its limbs make, the acoustics reminded me of a track from one of the less accessible German post-punk bands. I've told them and told them. Every night, the pipe network decouples so that the reservoir can fill, and every morning, it has to be reset manually. All you have to do is turn the valve thingy so the water flows directly into the pump. The rest of the servitors seem to get it, but this guy won't stop bugging out. I mean, I know we're supposed to be on-site advisors, but this is getting ridiculous. Do I have to scratch the instructions into their stupid shiny faces? Damn. All right. Okay, so Time there's to get some... the flow going to the right place. I say oh. this as a man typically enamored of complexities, but this looks like it might be a little much for me. Don't worry. I think I've got this. Music to my ears. <laughs> to each job its proper tool. Toothpicks make horrible arrows, as the saying goes. Right. Okay. So it's like the other puzzles. We just gotta be smart. 
about how we yeah okay so that one goes here water goes there we don't want it to go there that's not quite right so what if we what if we turn it this way you got a competent mind girl a mind for nuance and finesse not I no indeed not old Gildan. Turn it this way? There's nowhere for that water to go. Okay. Okay. Looks like I'm on the right track. So we turn this back. The water goes here. It's already going here. So maybe this there. direction wasn't. Step closer. Uh, uh. This job demands a certain degree of patience, doesn't it? I'm afraid I inherited my mother's restlessness. Okay. Something's not right. Okay, hold on. Let me... <laughs> There's a... This is easy. Just gotta figure it out. Okay, it's looking better. We're looking good. That goes to this one. That one... We just gotta switch this guy around, and then that hey, should push it? it right through. And then there it is. Cool. That took care of the rest of the water. Got it working, did you? <laughs> of course you did. Never met nice. a conundrum you couldn't unconundrum, have you? The door's open. Guess it had sealed because of the flooding. This must go down to the lower level. Cool. Ooh, that's weird. I guess we can't... We can't really get under here. But that's... I don't know what that is. Either way, we did it. Look at that! Ha! You've drained this place completely! Could be that this old ruin is hiding a few more secrets down below. Of course, that storage room still awaits our perusal. Mm. Mm. You smell that? Ooh. Ugh. Smells Looks like, like that's a forge side morning in a claim. I should head back up with Gildan. Come. Interesting. See? Check this out. We could just bang on this pipe, you know? It... Could we sample that or? Totally. Like, what about after the. I'm sorry. Compensatory damages. Interesting. Did they break something? I hope not. Those drainage pipes lead into another room. Ooh. I wonder what's in there. Ooh. Interesting. What other room? Or is it this way? Interesting. There's obviously, I feel like there's more here. So, as we circle back around to the matter of the supply room? Maybe? I don't know. I feel like there's something. I feel like now that we've drained the place, right? There's gotta be something. Unless this is it. And if it is it, that's okay. That means we did it. <laughs> okay, so I think I think for the most part that we we did actually clear the clear the place out. We drained the rest of the water, which is interesting because it was optional to drain the water. Like we could have left, but we didn't. I don't know if that's what got us that that mod in the hallway or in that like little area. And if it did, then, hell yeah, worth it. I don't know if this is gonna 
cause more flooding outside. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> well, I'm I mean, almost you, there. You still broke the button, so we're still gonna have to deal with that. Looking glass in my hand, just like Mum and I used to. All right. See. There you go. Alright, let's do this. Put this bad boy back in there. And... Uh... What? Top. Um... What are you doing with your hands there, girl? Left, up, down, up, right. That's right, because we have the focus, we can see the holograms. As far as he knows, we're just kind of touching air. <laughs> Genius. I can't believe that worked. I thought you'd lost your mind tickling the empty air like that. <laughs> All right. Gildan? Everything okay? I was so sure I saw it. The looking glass. I was so sure. Right there in the window. I was... Of course. Trick of the light. Nothing at all. I'm sorry, Gildan. It must have meant a lot to you. Oh, well. Much as any artifact of the old ones had mean to me really it's fine uh, i'm fine besides what are the spoils compared to the delve that's why we do it girl <laughs> the delve not the treasure <laughs> and what a delve it was uh, by the great blazing forge i'll never forget that <laughs> now then i uh believe we have some repairs to make hey, yeah go bad you're so looking forward to it. Farewell tour. I mean, this is it. We get to play together, what, maybe two more times? Nah, shit. Farewell tour! Reunion tour in like six months. Can't do it all time. <laughs> My For gosh. our adoring fan. It's not that hard to stay in touch, Shelly. We could practice in hollow space. People always say that. They always say that. It's true. Once you do a farewell tour. Cool. I mean, there was a lot of supplies in here, so that works. Okay. Another Let's power. Fix the panel and shut this place down. Yeah, let's do it. Fix this place. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't want to push the big red oh. button? That's a whole lot prettier, isn't it? <laughs> what does it mean? It means it worked. What does it mean? By the forge. <laughs> you are a wonder! Do you hear that often? I'll hazard a guess you do. I've heard something like that once or twice. Oh, she's modest now. <laughs> a master of the arts of the old ones, a delver to shame the entire claim, and she wants to be modest. It's not like I did it alone, Gildan. No. No, I suppose not. So what's next for you? On your way back to the claim? And deprive the people of Song's Edge the story of this encounter? Perish the thought! <laughs> I'll stay there a while longer. But a story is best told by all who encountered it. Come and lend a hand, won't you? Overflow basin empty. Interior accessible. Minimal flood damage. Sounds like the basin is dried out too. 
Maybe I'll take a look. Another adventure so soon? <laughs> You're braver than me. But there was no question of that. <laughs> That's you great. You go on ahead. I'm gonna stand right here and bask in our victory for a while longer. As you should. This is great. You know what? You know what? You were never. You were never. You never bothered. You talked a lot, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> Overall, overall, this is a this is a fun little fun little side side endeavor. Does this mean the the din is empty now? Because the din was the overflow basin. And if there's no reason to overflow, then right? I don't know. Lower. And going by that sound, oh. I think Lao Lai's already at the din. Oh yeah, it's like so faint you can barely hear it. She's she's down there banging away on it. What is this? A missions joyride. To Shelley Guerrera McKenzie from Laura Vogel. Subject, a missions joyride. Okay, girl, you are never going to guess what happened on my way home last night. First thing, I heard this sound, like a herd of killer bees escaping from out of a tin can. Then there was a weird... There's this weird light through the trees. I was totally hoping it was aliens, but nah. It was one of those old blue spectrum LEDs. Looked super creepy on the snow. As I got closer, I heard some Yahoo... <laughs> Letting out this weird guttural man shriek as if you were doing some macho primal scream therapy. You know, with a thousand RPMs between his legs. <laughs> said, y said Yahoo was none other than Dodd Blevins, our new director of security. This was Blevins? Oh no. Or whatever his $20 title is. He was actually riding an old snowmobile like a thousand times more polluting than a combustion air car. My expert professional opinion, Blevins is a grade A douche canoe. I love it. <laughs> uh, I decided not to sick the security bot on his flabby rear. After all, he's practically our boss for the next two weeks, but Shells, you might want to take a bathroom break now because you're going to lose it when you find out what I did instead. Oh no. <laughs> I was standing right near one of the trail signs, and I could tell Blevins was headed for me, so I reprogrammed the sign to swap directions between Fairy Falls and Purple Mountain. Oh, no. Wicked, right? You'd never get a snowmobile up there. I hope he bailed out hard and had to walk back to the lodge. Guess I'll be filing my very first incident report right before this whole thing shuts down forever. I could let it slide like usual, but then where's the fun? Shells, where's the fun? L. Oh, you, you guys are just a bunch of, bunch of fun, fun, crazy guys. Now, the basin. It is getting quite loud. She's down there banging away. She wasn't kidding about the sound. Uh. Oh. Okay. You gotta get over there. We can do it. That's easy. Easy, easy. Just sneak around. I'll never. Oh shit. Okay. We can do it. We are, we're we're pretty skilled. Go go go. Nope, 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 nope. You know what? That's what the shield's for. <laughs> yeah, so she, she just comes down here and... Yeah. Wow. You know? Aside from the, you know, snap maws up there, it's actually pretty cool.
Oh my god. so much truth to these lyrics there's there's depth ten, 10 out of 10 let's go where's the album can we get it on vinyl god damn there's there's such deep passion in those lyrics I, lo I love that that was a thing. I love, I love that. Thank you. Thank you, game. That was amazing. Last girls on earth. Dear nobody. The autocars are on their way. Mine will take me to my apartment in Cody. Hers will take her to the Verta, Verta port. She brought her luggage with her to work today. Everything she owns packed into two little suitcases. She's wearing the fanciest outfit I've ever seen her in. It's for mom, she said. She bought me this outfit, if you can believe it. Normally, like, who cares? But I don't know. She's already dealing with a lot. We walked through the dam today, listened to all these tapes, read all these messages, and maybe this is one of those sign my yearbook, we'll never lose touch things, but I'm not scared of losing Laura anymore. We're family. We didn't inherit each other or settle on each other. We chose each other. No amount of distance, no number of jerks in bad suits or obsequious, obsequious robots are going to tear us apart. So listen, on the off chance that someone ever actually does stumble onto these things, here's the truth. There was this band called Concrete Beach Party, and for a second, it was the best band in the world. And you, whoever you are, are really, really lucky because you're the only person who ever got to hear them. See you never, the last girls on earth. Damn. Going out with a bang. Respect. <laughs> Message text. Dear nobody, as far as I can tell, that's, that's who's going to read this. Those spooky guys showed up today with that creep Blevins to take measurements of our workstations. And next week, they start installing pharaoh servitors to do our jobs. Bye-bye, Shelly. Bye-bye, Laura. See you never. Hope you enjoy basic income. Good. Or, God. It's going to be weird to say goodbye to this place. When Quentin and I split, this was all I had. Thank God for a job where I could sit at a panel and press buttons and cry all day. Ah, oh, don't we all? Which I think is why we're doing this. Hiding the tapes of our rehearsals in the dam. These tapes are our memories, our ghosts. Through them, we get to haunt this place. Keep it human in some small way. This control room was where I was sitting when Laura came in dragging an old practice amp and a guitar behind her. Shells, she said. Girl, so I was looking at schematics for this place, and I found the perfect practice space. The acoustics in this place. Seriously bonkers. Like, echoing through the entire valley kinds of bonkers. Legit. You're going to soil yourself when you see it. I remember asking, practice space? Peace. Shelly. That response, the practice space question, that was what, uh, that was what took off everything for them. Here. With the band. Damn family. 
Just the whole... They're doing the practice, and then... Damn, they had this on everyone? Oh, man. <laughs> Dear nobody. When I took this job, we had to watch this training hollow. And I remember probably 2% of the actual hollow. At some point, the hollow welcomed me to the damn family. And I felt that... I felt that... Bleh. I felt like A. That was such a missed opportunity because they could have called it a damnly and chose not to. I mean, that's true. That's true. That was a missed opportunity. <laughs> and B, the idea that I would ever think of any of my coworkers as family was pretty ridiculous. But then one day I looked up and automation had whittled six people down to just Laura and I. And I was signing papers to dissolve the family I thought I had. And suddenly my last coworker with her faded tattoos and perpetually arched eyebrows, was telling me jokes and making me listen to bands I'd never heard of and cheering me up when I cried. Things were really good when it was just the two of us. We used to have these theme days. One day, the sluice gates were open. We would set up beach blankets on one of the catwalks in the intake tower and bat around this inflatable beach ball I had in my apartment for some reason. Laura messed around with the emergency PA and patched in a bunch of classical surf rock songs. We even put sunscreen on the bridges of our noses. Laura called it the Concrete Beach Party. Whoa. When Laura brought up band names, I pretty much right away knew that that would be our name. Concrete Beach Party. There was really... There never really was any other choice. That's great. I love that. I love that's how they came up with the name. Uh. Because it was like... Concrete... Yeah, because of the, the dam. But... I love how it was a, a specific moment that occurred. That, like, triggered that. Limited edition merch. And dear nobody. We spent an hour plastering our stickers all over that servitor. Well, I say stickers. They were real... They were sticky notes from my desk. We stole the presentation and design of other band logos, drawing little skulls and lightning bolts and broken hearts around the name. It's not like we had any actual work to do. When this began, we were told we'd be on-site advisors, going through the motions of our duties so the servitors could mimic our actions. But the government creeps, corporate creeps, same diff, I guess, mostly ignored us or yelled at us for getting in their way. So, like... The hell are they supposed to do? <laughs> the Robo Scab's weird oval head kept swiveling toward us and kept asking, Hello, is this relevant to my training? As we tried to duck out of <laughs> its line of sight, ruining its chrome finish with sticky notes and shushing each other's giggles. Oh my god. Afterward, Laura stood in front of the thing and goes, Servitor, this is very important. This is how you greet Blevins, okay? It's a sign of immense respect. I mean, will the sor servitor actually give Blevins the finger? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Probably not, right? But a girl can dream. Screw the man, Shelly. That's funny. This is how you greet Blevins. Compen compensatory damages. Oh yeah, this is when they were, uh, they were banging on the pipe and then something happened. Dear nobody, I feel embarrassed now thinking about following Laura out of the pump station like a kicked puppy, wondering what horrible thing I might have done, until she threw herself in this room and shut the door behind her and just screamed. The fear of abandonment is weirdly self-centered, because it's, it presupposes that little old you are filled with such immense destructive power that you're capable of driving every person you care about away. Anyway, at the bottom of the dam, with her on one side of the door and me on the other, she told me that Metallurgic had brought her mom's house, her whole neighborhood in fact, out from under her to build a new server farm. Oh shit. That's fucked up. Oh god. I don't even like that house, she said. I don't even like Indianapolis. I hated every minute I spent in that city as a kid. When they told us we'd have to leave the dam, I went back to my apartment and I sat on my bed and I prayed to a god I don't even believe in that I wouldn't have to move back home, that I wouldn't have to show up on my mom's front stoop with a suitcase and a bunch of stupid excuses. 
She was trying not to sound like she was crying, but she sounded like she was crying. I guess I got my stupid wish, huh? Damn. I asked her where she'd go, and she laughed. Where else could she go? Back home to help her mom pack up the house to move her into whatever dank little one-room hole Metallurgic's displacement grant will allow them to afford. They could have dealt with being one of those letters who celebrate their... F one of those losers who celebrate their 40th birthday living in the house they grew up in, but now, now I don't even have that. I have no idea how to make her feel better, so I just sat on the other side of the door. I started singing the song we were working on. The one about being the last two girls on earth. And eventually she started singing along. Love, Shelly. <laughs> and a farewell tour. <laughs> and then, reunion, six month reunion, guaranteed. Dear nobody, we got in a fight, Laura and I. After practice, we went out for drinks. There's this row bar in downtown Cody. So we called in an auto car and shuttled over. We were the only people there. With the park closing, Cody's become a ghost town. Becoming a ghost town. The more we drink, the more passive-aggressive our banter became. Snowballing out of our control. <laughs> Metas Metastasis. <laughs> Metastasis. Metastasizing. Good God. <laughs> In the empty air between us, and then before either of us really knew what was happening, we were yelling at each other. I kept thinking, like, I'm not abandoning her. She's not abandoning. She's abandoning me. And I guess she's probably thinking something similar. We got quiet for a while. Drank more. Eventually, Laura ordered an auto car. We piled into it. Slid as far from each other in the back seat as we could. Arms crossed, staring out the window. And then I heard myself talking. Screw it. I don't care if you stay in touch with me. I'm going to stay in touch with you. Whether you like it or not, you're not getting rid of me. Ever. <laughs> Laura looked at me for what felt like ages. Thought she was going to start yelling. But then her hand crept over mine and we just sat there together. Bottoms up, Shelly. Wholesome. Oh yeah, this was about his uh, Blevins. He wants uh, firepower. Not just, uh, not just cameras. It's a little bit, it's a little bit extra. Miss Pines. Dodd Blevins. Right now, I am looking at a security drone. It was requisitioned from Faro Automated Industries to serve the needs of the Firebreak Project. It is, in fact, one of an entire fleet handpicked by me and allotted for our use by Ted Faro. Yes, the man so far above you on the ladder that he might as well be God. I have a direct line to your father in heaven. That That's actually, that's a funny line. It's, now, you and I have a conversation which I tried to impart to you the uh, sensitive nature of our project. If I recall correctly, you said, I understand, Mr. Blevins. I took you at your word, which apparently was a flaw in my judgment. Since you have sent me a goddamn fleet of flying CCTV cameras and a bunch of jerk-off eggheads who think they know more about protecting this country than I do. Now, your technicians are going to provide me with the firepower I need to prevent a major act of terrorism from occurring in, in or around my facilities. And they're going to do so without increasing our project budget. Because, Miss Pines, this is your screw-up, and I'm, a, I'm not a reasonable man. But so help me, if you add another cent to Firebreak's balance sheet, I will see to it that you, you personally, answer to Mr. Farrow and his board of directors, so I want you to call me back. I want you to leave me a message. I want that message to consist of four little words. I understand, Mr. Blevins, and this time I want you to mean them. Good God, like, talk about, like, I'm gonna go tell your boss. You speak to the manager. <laughs> God, this is their their awesome track that we we finally got to hear. Finally got to hear Concrete Beach Party's song. After all this time. And the message text was Last Girls on Earth by Concrete Beach Party. Recorded in the Overflow Basin Studios. <laughs> Laura, 
vocal on guitar. Shelly Guerrero McKenzie on Vox. Electronics percussion courtesy of the magical power of automation. Loss of livelihood also courtesy of the <laughs> magical power of automation. It's been real. XOXO. Bye. She has the same vibe. You know, she feels it. She feels the, the acoustic potential of this you place. You happy to be playing again? I don't know what you did, but the water drained in the snap of a short song. What do you think of the music? I've never heard anything else like it. That's because there's no other place with such resonance, such intonation that rattles your ribs with its power. And of course, no one else knows these pipes like I do. I learned them by ear before I could walk, strapped to my father's back. Oh. Thank you for draining the waters. Not just for myself, but for my ancestors and their songs. Please, take this as a token of our gratitude. What? We got Blue Gleam. Hell yeah. Let's see. What shall I play next? The echoes are different off whetstone. The sound is warmer. I gotta admit, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> it, pretty, it probably does sound pretty crazy. It's probably a fun pastime. Hell yeah, we got more blue gleam, so we're just we're just stacking up blue gleam. Okay, now we're gonna make our way back to Song's Edge, and you know, see uh, see where we stand. All right, so now that we've actually finished getting uh getting that piece from the the metal bird, we can actually talk to this guy. He can teach us the ways. Is this what you? Hush, hush. A shaman's secrets are not spoken aloud. Is this what you wanted me to find? Bind it to your spear. Use it to attach this for now. You'll find more, I'm sure. Why are you helping me? The blue light is fading. The machine songs are ending. And, and what does the conclave do? They sit, they chant, they observe. No more. We must fight for it. And you? You are a fighter. We share a cause. I'm not sure we do. I'm not even sure what the cause is. But I'm grateful. No need for thanks. Only action. Now I can attach modification oh. parts to my spear. Yo! Works for me. Might as well get started improving my spear. Hell yeah. Holy shit. I was hoping that's what it would be and... <sighs> we have two slots. Yo. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. Damn. All these spear damage. We, we've we had... We've had these since the beginning of the fucking... T beginning of the main game. Look at that. Our spear damage is beefy. That's a... <laughs> that's a... Oh, uh, hell yeah. I think the one... The one that... Uh, he just gave us... Yeah, our, ours are better. We've been saving these. And now, our spear is rad. Now, hell yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. I'm so glad we could do that. Oh. Like, the spear, the spear's damage itself isn't, like, amazing. Yeah. Good to see Maybe it'll be a little bit this. better. With these, but I've never traveled further south than uh, Greyboard. In the old days, the Mad Sun King made doing so impossible. How long until the demon births the perfect machine? One will have no chance of fighting. Oh boy! All right. Air attack. Air talk. Another. Another side quest? Oh my god. Oh, it's all the way... It's over there. Okay. We will do that after talking to this guy. Because we... We have to challenge him. And I don't even know... I don't even know how this is going to go. My like, people have been telling tales of your accomplishments. Seems you have taken a special interest in our stretch of snow, Outlander. Yes. 
And apparently, this is the only way I'll get to see all of it. Is this a challenge? Oh. For the Warwick. You? <laughs> this must be a joke. It is not a joke, Eratok. Oh, she came down. Now I see. The Outlander's your pawn. Oh, God. And with you backing her claim, I have no choice but to accept. I expected better of you, sister. Oh. It was you who forbid me from Thunder's drum, brother. Brother and sister? <laughs> this is a little more complicated than I thought. No, it's simple. You will meet me at the Frost Figures, and I'll put a quick end to this mockery. Oh, this is awkward. I suppose I owe you an explanation. Yeah? <laughs> I suppose uh, you do. Aloy, that was great. Thank you for... So, uh, why didn't you tell me that you and Aratok are siblings? I thought I wouldn't have to. I'm surprised Aratok brought it up in front of a stranger. He must be very angry. But not always the best judge of... People. I prefer the company of spirits. They're simply my own. I didn't want you to think of our pilgrimage as some sort of family squabble. It's much more important than that. Right. It's bold. I'll give you that. Going after your own brother. He gave me no choice. He thinks I'm a child to be shoved to the back of the hunt. He would forbid me from my destiny. And yet... Part of me did it knowing he would forgive me, eventually. He always does. <laughs> I mean, probably, but I don't know if that was worth it. Family drama aside, what's this challenge meant to be anyway? You and Aratok will hunt machines at the Frost Figures. The victor will be the fastest. It won't be easy. Nothing about this has been so far. When you meet us at the starting point, I'll tell you more. It will be simpler to explain from the base of the hills. Okay. So we just have to hunt something faster than him. Should be fine. Araya, it's not about who's related to who. I want to know what's inside Thunder's drum. The spirit, the daemon, and how it all connects to the machines. But if we're going to go through with this, I need you to be straight with me. I underestimated you. And our talk. Yeah. I won't make that mistake again. See you at the Frost Figures then. Uh, God damn. Family drama. So, off to risk my life in order to take charge of a Banuk hunting band. Just what I always wanted. <laughs> Frost Figures, here I come. Just what I've always wanted. Like, it feels weird, right? Like, a a always I mean, obviously, yeah, she's like a seeker. She's not really part of the. She was raised in the Nora tribe, but she doesn't really. She doesn't really associate herself with a specific tribe, I guess. Because she's been an outcast. But I guess it still feels weird that she's going to be, uh, trying to become a chieftain of a Banuk tribe. All right, to the Frost figures. So we're gonna do that on the next episode. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Stick around, because we got more Frozen Wilds ahead. <laughs> Let me know what you think. And for real, this is awesome. We are counting down to the Forbidden West. Less than, uh, less than two weeks. Just under two weeks. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so for real, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.